This is John Graves with Helga Sonnier and Sam Rogers at uh, AUT University on the, the 7th of March 2012. And we're just going to have a little introduction to Slide Speech, a newly incorporated uh, company here in New Zealand, which is set to change the world with uh, globally accessible free online learning materials like Wikipedia. I'm just going to set my recorder going here too so we can have a record of this. Um, the, uh, basic idea of text-to-speech is the uh, slide speech is that it uses text-to-speech and text-to-speech is a technology that's been around for a while uh, actually almost every computer that's been in, uh, shipped in the last few years has had some kind of text-to-speech capability on it uh, for accessibility reasons people thought that uh, you need to have a way for uh, people who are maybe visually impaired to be able to hear what's on their computer screen uh, if uh, if they couldn't read it very well. And the uh, other place where you've got a lot of text-to-speech happening all of a sudden is on mobile devices where everyone has a GPS and wants turn-by-turn uh, -turn navigation. So the computers and the mobile devices that we have today all have this ability to speak. And when you take uh, speech uh, or you start with text, like I, I'm going to make a little diagram here which we'll zoom in on later, and you send it to the computer and it generates a uh, waveform, a digital representation of that text, which is then sent through the internet, it becomes something that a person can hear. So. You literally you start with a word and you end up with something that it, through your earphones or your speakers you'll be able to hear. Well there's another way to do this which is to say we've got our text and we can send it first through the internet as text which gets it to a computer where it gets converted into one of these waveforms which is then immediately playable and hearable by someone's ear. The thing that does that conversion from text into something you can hear is called a text-to-speech engine. Or I'm going to put TTS engine here, sorry for the um, acronym, but it makes things a little simpler. So we can put the text-to-speech engine either in front of the internet or after the internet. The after the internet is what's happening on your mobile device. And because you're not having to send this big waveform through the internet, the file size of any script of text that goes into a mobile phone is going to be very small. Okay, but there's a, some important aspects of this system that are, are worth considering. When you are doing this text-to-speech, you get two things. You get the ability for it to be asynchronous which means that I can create text now and then you can hear the text later. And we have the possibility for it to be collaborative, which means that I can produce text now, Helga can revise that text in a little while, and then you can hear the revised and improved version. So what does this give us in terms of a, an opportunity uh, for learning. Well, Sir John Daniel of the, the Commonwealth for Learning has described the whole situation of education as being very problematic because it's bounded by something called the Iron Triangle of access, quality, and cost. What does he mean by this? Well, in a traditional ac academic setting or school, if you want to improve people's access, in other words, you want to have more schools or more opportunity for people to learn, typically that means building a bigger school or hiring more teachers, and those things cause your costs to increase. If you want to have better teachers, that typically involves, again, more costs. And if you're in a situation where you don't have as much money, you've reduced your costs, it's likely that both your access and quality will go down. So the learner is constrained by these access, quality, and cost boundaries in the, in the traditional setting. But what happens when we start applying technology? 
we can take all of these things that are happening today, and because text-to-speech is asynchronous, we can project out that learning experience into the future. So we get this long triangle which stretches out access and quality while reducing costs. So here's the future, and here's a learner that intercepted that learning material at some point in the future. And between today and when they encounter it is the possibility for this collaborative improvement. Okay, so technology enables us to break out of the iron triangle and give a vastly larger number of people access to much higher quality content at much lower cost. And those are the underpinning principles of slide speech. So let's actually look at slide speech in action. Uh, we're going to start with PowerPoint, a piece of software that everybody has and knows how to use. We're going to put a slide into PowerPoint and come into the speaker notes, which everybody's had all this time to remind themselves what to say on each slide. And in the speaker notes, we will put a script for the computer to say when that slide is presented. So this is slide one. It's enough to demonstrate this capability. Because uh, the whole slide speech system is open source, we're in PowerPoint now, but we want to save our presentation off as an ODP, or open document presentation file. And we'll just call it demo, and we'll put it on the desktop. And now we want to run it through slide speech. To do that, we need to open a web browser and find our server on the internet. So now we just go back and try it again, browsing for our file. That looked good. So here now is the presentation that has been uploaded. It broke what was a PowerPoint presentation into a slide image and the text that we put into the speaker notes. And then when I say publish, it's taken that text-to-speech, rendered it into the audio file, and now we can play it. This is slide one. Okay. How long did that take? <laughs> um, give me some. I can see what I can do with it here yep. on the computer. Give yep. me some real world applications. Okay. Uh, the the big application is asynchronous distance learning. Okay. Uh, you don't want to have to organize a venue where a whole audience full of people have to find places to park and find their way in there just to hear you talk. You want to be able to sit at your computer wherever you may be in the world. Prepare the message that you would like to give and hit go. And then whoever wants to hear it will be able to hear it at any time, at their convenience. So, you know, the world is round. Half of it is in nighttime all the time. So that means your message, if you had to give it in person, is unavailable half the time. Yeah. Unless it's online. Okay. In which case it's available all the time. And not only is it available all the time, but when the first 10 people watch it and they find that, oh, that was good, except for Helga, you forgot about this, you can instantly go in and fix what was wrong with this. And then the next 100 people that watch it are going to get the new and improved version because it's all completely dynamic. It doesn't depend on your being there to give the presentation. So. Your process your, of delivering a message can be continually enhanced and improved. And consequently, whatever message you're trying to convey is going to become more and more effective over time using this system. Okay. When you have a native app, <laughs> it shows up like this quickly. You've got a list of apps, and this is going to speak in Chinese. Okay, 
Speaking of Chinese language tongue twister, that <laughs> some people in China can't actually say very well. But I can change the language. Setting my text to speech settings to uh, a voice from a company called Loquendo. Now it'll be in English. And when I go back into my software, it can give a presentation. You can share your knowledge by following three simple steps. As you and others follow these steps, we create a free, global learning system for everyone. First, learn to use this new system. You have already started. Get used to the idea of a computer-generated voice giving an explanation and asking questions. Do you need to click your mouse to advance to the next slide? What? Unlike a human oh. voice, a computer voice can speak for many people all at once. We know collaboratively created content allows free sharing of knowledge. So the first step is learning to collaborate. The key skill for effective online collaboration is making changes in place. This makes Wikipedia great. With only one article on each topic, everyone works together collaboratively to improve the article. Now, with this text-to-speech system, everyone can work together to improve talks and lessons. This talk can be distributed in many ways, as a video, on the web, on mobile devices, and as a script. To change this talk, you need to find the source script and modify it. The script was created by adding speaker notes to the slides in a presentation. Then that script was pulled out of the presentation and posted on an editor where you can modify it. What I, I talk about in that is a whole nother modality of, of doing the authoring, which is essentially putting the whole script on a wiki page. So if we can edit and update wikis, we can now edit and update slide speech scripts, which will then play. If I wanted to go into using your technology, could I, can, could I type things and have them posted on Facebook? So if, I, if my daughter posts a picture of, of her and I at Pony Club, and I want to make a comment versus uh, a note on Facebook. Could Where I, the computer speaks that yes, comment? Yes, so, so instead, so I want to type into the computer and say, well, oh, that was a great day, but I want my daughter to hear it because I want her to be able to continue to hear it. And where I want her to hear it in Canada, perhaps. Yes. Okay, so, because voice is so much more personal than text. Yes. Can I do that? Uh, there's no reason why you wouldn't ultimately be able to make any kind of audio or presentation message using this system. Uh, it was my sister's birthday the other day and I thought, ah, I yeah. can make a, a slide <laughs> speech birthday greeting and yeah. send it off to her. Yeah. So uh, this is what I was going to try and show is the you're just working on a wiki and uh, then you get to hear the wiki. So let's see, I think this is a script here called Hi Kim. Starts and let's uh, make it say something different. We'll edit it. This is now just a wiki page, and we'll have it say "Hi Helga." And then we'll come down here and save that, just as we would edit any other wiki page. Now I now have a uh, an address for that wiki page. that I can go into my slide speech and paste the address to the wiki page. Hi Helga, this is a collaborative wiki page. Whatever is typed here can be played using the computer voice. Can you hear the computer talking? Yes. No. So now I've given it a multiple choice, and how did we do that? It's as simple here as putting the words yes and no and following them up with uh, a semicolon. The semicolon indicates that that is something that should become a multiple choice answer. And when that answer is picked, you follow that with uh, an indication of how the computer should respond if that answer is picked. Did you follow that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we, we can go. Oops. We can go back to our, our presentation and click on yes and it'll show you the word great great and your group can slide. type whatever they like here okay. if I say no try turning up the volume <laughs> can you hear it now yes no all right so again whatever that interaction might be 
if it's a you know a question about you know do you understand the concept of thermodynamics you know the the, the script can then lead you to the appropriate learning materials and so then it's just a question of getting enough people interested and excited about the idea of creating those learning materials that will make learning ubiquitous and um, mm -hmm. I've got to take the skull, sorry.